Hello there, welcome. I'm playing Azalea today into an Enigma and we're playing Dreadbore. Now why would Azalea run Dreadbore? It's a specific tech into matchups like Enigma that run lots of D-reacts. Obviously you won't have the benefit of drawing an extra card that Death Dealer gets you, but just keeping them hanging on their D-reacts can be quite beneficial. Okay, so starting off as Azalea, you want to go first, you want to look for a dominated arrow usually in our case though i just want to make sure <clears throat> that enigma doesn't establish any board so first of all i'm gonna try to lure her into blocking here a bit and then in case she should actually try to put out an aura i will play the codex just clear that otherwise we'll arsenal the released attention <clears throat> okay so Enigma is usually not quite favored into Azalea. Um, the Azalea does not only have Dreadbore, we only we also run Merkmire to counter the matchup. And we're just presenting a lot of damage every turn. And believe it or not, Enigma's blocking value turn by turn isn't exactly great. It's okay, and she is running lots of D-Reacts. But it's not like there's a lot of armor, for example. And the reason Guardians... Um, have a good time into Azalea is because there's not only the reacts, there's also armor and there's a lot of disruption and two of those things uh, Enigma doesn't really have. So I'm deciding to block with two arrows even though Enigma is establishing some board here. That's just because we can't really um, use those this turn. And we're seeing it take aim on top. Just gonna leave that there for now. Unfortunately I'm not gonna draw it because we're playing that Dread War. And now just shooting the infecting shot. And then in our next hand we will have four cards and the tunic counter. So if we draw a zero cost arrow we can load this um, of the tunic. And already now this, this nine is quite uncomfortable for Enigma to block out if she doesn't want to lose her ward. Because there are many two blocks, there are many non-blocks in the deck, there are many D-reacts that have well weird breakpoints uh, in this case she does have all three blocks so it's convenient and this just means next next turn we're gonna take a bit of damage again um, but with the codex of blood rot here we will be able to throw 10 back create a blood rot token and a ponder spectra is of course or can of course be a bit of a problem for Azalea, since we are kind of stuffed on action points and we can't really clear their auras and their, or rather their ward auras and their spectra auras at once. The thing is though, as I said, we present so much damage that the games go quite quickly and more often than not, Enigma can't get too much value out of those spectra auras. Okay, once again, we were just buffing the drill shot. Coming in for 10. Now she either gives us her hand and the spectral shield. Only keeps the waxing, well, not even the waxing spectre alive because the blood rot will kill it. So she could just take the full 10 and try to get back at us. Whenever I'm playing this matchup as Enigma, I'm really just trying to trade back and forth and trying to get the Azalea low. And then when she's at like 15 or I prefer uh, to be even lower, then I will pop the traverse and... Um, play a mirror guy and ideally a little bit more um, than that and just you know push some damage cause the azalea to block and then maybe at SD enigma you can get in a spot where they are really not able to present enough damage anymore with a hand like this though um azalea won't have any struggle in the matchup we will just be able to buff four times here send out the endless arrow and then more likely than not get a ponder back which will then in turn basically be a four card um 16 with the blood rod on at 18 so yeah just azalea things i think as of yet we have not um stranded enigma on any on any direct and of course there are more direct heavy decks, um, enigma decks and less direct heavy ones. 
Um, there's the question whether you want to actually dominate this remorseless, and I think that's very much worth it. It ensures we get the on hits through, so that's basically the case anyway. But like this, we once again play into our dread bomb more. If there really are some directs in hand, she won't actually be able to get rid of them all. But yeah, as of now, not much dread bomb value. And I think ultimately you might just run the death dealer into this matchup anyways. Um, kind of will depend on how Enigma decks shape up. Uh, I've seen some Azalea lists that also run Merkmires in different colors. I really don't think that's necessary for the Enigma matchup as of yet. But it's something to keep in mind. So Enigma with two cheese in hand right now. Oh, and one is getting used for the Meridian Pathways here, it seems. Okay, just for the ward. Oh, never mind. Okay, so for Enigma for the Spectre Shield and then we're also warding. Um, don't see why why that's necessary right now. You could just keep that for a later turn. So maybe block something, some on it with that. Um, then on the other hand, now now that's secured value. <laughs> if we're sending a Merkmire Grapnel when she's very low, then it might just be too late. Okay, right here we can. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Are there? Is it possible to throw multiple arrows here? Um, if the Bolton Shot should connect, then of course we can reload into a Merkmire. Since that's not... Hmm, it's not secured though, so you might just want to block with a... With one of the arrows here. Though we need one to... To pitch for the loading, so we might just... Keep on the run for the Arsenal anyways. In my Enigma decks, I'm also looking to play quite some disruption. So, for example, Scenes, they are just a nice combo piece with your Auras because they will force the enemy to interact with you on your turn and then they will have a smaller hand to come back with. And they will also um, make sure that, the, that your opponent gets lower in HP, which again is, is a favorable thing for the Enigma. And then I'm also running Warmongers and sometimes Dissolve Re Reality, which are both also quite nice in into the Azalea matchup. Because as I said, Enigma has a hard time here usually. Now since we found a Bolton Shot on top, we're just happy to use that to for sure get that second arrow into the arsenal. And a nice little, well, upside of the Dread Boss, of course, that it um, grants plus one to the arrow you load. And if Bolton Shot has at least plus one, it will get go again. So what we can do now is load the Bolton Shot and will in fact get go again. And if that one should hit, then we can even load the Grabmire grab Merc Mill. The, wait, no, the Merkmire Grab Mill, that's the way. Um... If not, we just have an arsenal. As of now, I'd also say that the shimmers did not really get any value, so fine on that front. I'm not really sure why Enigma used to traverse here. Usually you want to use that to play a bigger combo turn. Um, ideally towards the end of the game. We once again have an arrow to spare, so we're just blocking with that. And the second shimmers. Um, okay, now the Spectre Shield got some value off that. But as long as she won't be able to like keep Spectre Shields alive, then the shimmers won't be doing much for her. Though it's something to keep in mind. Find another arrow. <clears throat> and Merkmire isn't really too important for us right now, so... Dominating the Endless Arrow was also a play, though that in turn would have meant that we were then stuck with two arrows in hand. Um, still, It's still fine. The Amplifying Arrow can still be used for pitch. I'd rather um, like uh, improve my chances to 
draw more buffs in the next hand. Which we do. Um, this, this hand otherwise could have been something like, I don't know, Spire Sniping, Infecting Shot, Endless Arrow, Rain Razors. And then it's kind of more awkward. Now with Rain Razors and your equipments up, you always want to look for a bit of a wider turn if possible. I think right now we don't have the resources to make that happen. Phantasmoclasm is also a nice card for Enigma because of set reasons. We'll be kind of forced to take this to then in turn clear their board. And therefore we'll get lower. But since Enigma doesn't have the Traverse anymore, we don't really need to worry about a big mirror guy coming in towards the end of the game. Okay. Find a Spire Sniping. Mm. We would have to pay for that, so I'd rather sink that away for now and only play the Amplifying Arrow. We'll give that go again. We'll also play the Rain Razors on that. Um, Amplifying Arrow, of course, synergizes very well with buffs. It'll get an extra point of attack for each buff you play onto it. Okay, Enigma thinking of overblocking here. Of course, it's kind of telling whenever you keep some cards back in hand as Azalea. Um, and against Brutes, you need to be careful here. If they had a Scowling Flashback, you of course could get intimidated. But against Enigma, there's nothing to worry about here. And even the extra information she gains can't really be converted into much for in, on her side. So we're just playing the Rain Razors out now. And then we'll probably get her auras cleared. And after that, we'll just send the Infecting Shot. Okay, our next hand lets us at least play a very nice codex here. <clears throat> we could also look for a dominated arrow of the Knock the Death Whistle. And since we will get a um, Ponder token with that anyways, that might just be the better call. Um, another... Okay, um, the, the other possibility, of course, is to go for a Bolton Shot that will get go again and then play the Codex of Frailty afterwards. I don't think the there isn't much of a difference, um, though. Mm. In this case, case, we won't get the Dominate, but we will get one more damage. Because we, um, instead of playing the Premeditate, played the Bolton Shot now. Um, and we get the Dominate on the Bolton Shot, of course, but we don't get the Dominate on the bigger arrow we're throwing with the Codex now. And Enigma, once again, has a few non-blocks in her hand, so even blocking this these 5 damage could become problematic for her. And it would appear that it actually is quite, quite difficult. And now the Seek and Destroy will get rid of her last card, which is very nice for us. And then now we are just able to play another really tall hand here. I think just going for Seek and Destroy into Bolt and Shot of the Bolts Abrasers and then finishing up with a Codex will be the nail in the coffin for Enigma. 
Um, so for my liking, actually a little too close for that matchup, so Dreadbow might just not be it. And I don't think we really did much here with this anyways. Um, I'm not sure if the Enigma ran any unmovables. So yeah, that's that said. Let's look into the deck. Uh, actually, she's running unmovable, so seems like we just got unlucky um, on her to not finding them uh, very early. So that's it for that. I'll see you next time.